What's up everyone, Neely here with WPJumpstart.pro, helping web designers grow and manage their business. Today we're talking about how to create a fly-in menu using Elementor Pro. All right, so today we're gonna to be doing a bit of a demo to show you how to utilize the pop-up feature in Elementor Pro to create a fly-in menu effect. These are pretty cool when it comes to designing a website, it really makes a site pop, makes it feel a little bit more fancy than just a standard traditional menu. So we're gonna be doing a bit of a demo, like I said earlier, demo, 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 lots of demos. So let me just flick this down here and we'll get going. So the effect we're trying to achieve is something like this. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. So inside of Elementor, or your WordPress dash rather, we want to go ahead and create a pop-up because that's ultimately what this is. Instead of creating a pop-up like a newsletter, subscribe here, download this, whatever it might be, we're utilizing that feature to create that effect. So I've already got a couple tabs open, so let me just close a couple here. Uh, I'm gonna go over to templates and then pop-ups. You can see I already have quite a few already set up. I'm gonna go ahead and click add new. All right, the template file, example pop-up, create template. Now, once you hit that create, it's going to present you with a couple of templates you can choose from to kind of get the ball rolling. Uh, now you can go here and, and make one yourself or you can do it from scratch. I'm gonna show you how to do it from scratch. So you have to start from one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit this bad boy here. I'm gonna hit plus. I'm gonna use just a single column. And now it doesn't look all that fancy. It's just a little box. I want it over to the right and I wanna do a bunch of different things. So the bottom left, this little gear settings icon here, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click it. So there's a width option to set how big you want it here. Uh, let's do 400 even, that seems fine. Height, fit to content, fit to screen. So we wanna choose that fit to screen so it has that entire uh, height because we want it to fly out pretty nice and organized there. Uh, position, this is kind of hiding it, but there's a position here with horizontal. You can essentially quickly move it pretty easily. I wanna show it on right. We got an overlay, yep. That overlay is basically if you want that little dark background, if you will, over the actual content. If this is gonna be for a fly-in menu, I recommend keeping this enabled. Have a close button. You don't want people to not be able to close this darn thing. And then entrance animation is gonna be kind of important here. So that way it just doesn't appear. Uh, it has a nice little effect. So if we wanna come in from the right-hand side, we have to choose from in right. So if we want it to fade in or slide in, uh, there's zoom in, bounce in. I typically go with this, this simple slide effect, but to each their own. If something works better for you, use it. And then exit animation. Again, you don't want it to just disappear. Go ahead and choose the same effect typically to keep the, uh, the style uh, cohesive. Uh, so slide out right. Animation duration. This is how fast of an animation you want this to do. Uh, when it comes to this, I'll usually decrease it quite a bit. Uh, so it's a bit quicker of an animation. People don't have to wait to, to see what's happening there. Uh, so that we're good from there. You have general settings where you can throw in your title and things like that. There's different style settings. So pop-up, so if you want the background type, um, I typically have a different color, if you will. Uh, but I'm gonna leave this alone because I'm gonna show you a different area to actually accomplish this. But you can set up a different overlay color if that works better for you for and your branding. So if you want it to be a solid color, you can. You can adjust it as needed if you want. Totally black out. Uh, I'd probably just leave it a transparent black. Uh, it just looks a little bit nicer, really makes your, your sidebar pop. And then the close button, depending on what color you end up making your background, this is important to update. You can also increase the size if you want to make it super apparent that they can close. So I think that's fine now for the actual, the, the framework, if you will, the skeletons. Uh, let's add some content on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the section and to kind of make it a little bit easier to see what we're working with, I'll open up the navigator. 
If you haven't used the Navigator, I recommend doing it with a lot of your stuff. It helps you really keep organized with your content. And you can even double click and rename the, the section, if you will, whatever you want. It definitely helps when you start to have a lot of content and you wanna to jump to different places pretty quickly. A simple rename goes a long way. But with this, I want to set full, uh, fit to screen. So I have this whole area to work with. And this is where I'll typically adjust the, the colors or things like that, because I can add all the different elements, whether it's just the classic, whether it's a, a color, an image, the gradient, a video, a slideshow, whatever that looks like. Uh, to fit my branding, I have this purple and then a bit darker here. So that's gonna work for me. I can have the overlay or borders if I, I want to, but I'm good from there. The next thing we wanna do is actually add the menu for our flyout menu. To add the menu, go to the elements finder and just type in menu. Uh, and then you can go ahead and move this guy over. I only have one menu here, but if you have a bunch to choose from, you would select it there. For the layout, we're gonna go ahead and choose drop down. Most people do vertical, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose drop down. Uh, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. Toggle button, I want none. So it actually shows me the content here. Sub menu indicator, go ahead and choose Chevron. Um, I'm going to adjust the width of this because I don't want to go all the way full screen here. And I'll typically do that by going, choosing the element, going to advance, and then going down to positioning, choosing custom, and then setting my width here. I'll do, yeah. 250 looks good. Now, by default, it's probably going to look like this. And the way you choose that is doing what I just did here. So edit the column, go down to horizontal align and choose center. All right, now let's go ahead and actually style this menu. Cool, so I have my menu styled here. I kept it pretty simple. And the reason why I chose the option that I did instead of doing vertical, choosing the drop down, is so I can have this cool little horizontal line effect. But vertical would have worked just the same. Now I wanna add some social icons like I did in my normal menu. I just type in social in the widget finder, throw that bad boy in here. Now you can add whatever social icons you actually have accounts for. I'm gonna keep this basic and just keep those three. Official color, I'm gonna choose custom so I can update it to my own color. And I always get it confused which is which. All right, cool. So I don't want that. So last thing I'm gonna do is add a bit of margin here so it's not so much. And then I think I am done for the most part. If you wanna add your logos or any other content here, feel free to do it. But for the sake of the demo, I'm keeping things easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish. Where do you want to display your template? Probably everywhere. If not, I mean, kind of go through these different rules here. Uh, but I'm gonna choose everywhere, include entire site, go next. Uh, so I'm not gonna do any triggers here. So go next, no advanced rules either. So go save and close. All right, so now we have to actually assign the pop-up to our item. Now you can do this with a button, you can do this with text, you can do this with almost any link on Elementor itself. Uh, for this, I actually have an image. So with this image and this link, I'm gonna get rid of this little pound. I'm gonna go ahead and go to dynamic tags and then scroll down until I find pop-up. 
and now it's waiting for a pop-up to be assigned. So this part wasn't necessarily obvious to me. I had to do some digging myself. But you actually have to click on pop-up to assign it. There's no like button or anything that makes that obvious. So it's kind of confusing, but we want to go ahead and choose, uh, start, sorry, start typing the name of our pop-up. Oh gosh, what we choose? Oh yeah, example. So we have example pop-up template, update. And now I think it'll actually do it in the editor. No, it will not. Now that link is assigned to your, your pop-up that you just made, however you designed it, however it looks, it's assigned to that pop-up, which is your menu. So when we check out the live website, go ahead and refresh this. Remember the one that we made, I didn't have a logo at the bottom like my other one. So bam, I got it right here. The couple links that we created, I have that pop-up menu. And you can do this with all sorts of things. Like this search icon here is using a pop-up menu to create this search. Uh, the world is your oyster with the different types of things that you can create with that pop-up feature. But this is tutorial to show you how to create an inline flying menu with Elementor Pro. I hope this helps you with creating your, your new menus with your websites. If you like this video, got some value at it, go ahead and smash that like button. Add a comment below, let me know what questions you have with Elementor so I can get some content created for you. And I will see you next time. My name is Neely with WPJumpstart.pro.